talk to us about your funding round and what exactly, how exactly you're going to be putting this investment to use. Uh, yeah, sure. So, you know, we're excited to announce our $35 million Series B funding round for Relativity. And uh, we're using the money to primarily grow the team. Um, so to, to date, we've done over 100 engine tests and built what is the largest metal 3D printer in the world. Um, but we've done it with only 17 people. So now we really need to scale out the technology um, to get closer to actual orbital flights planned by the end of 2020. Your goal is to create a rocket that relies 100% on 3D printed parts. How far away are you from that? Uh, yeah, that's right. So we're looking to print the entire rocket. Um, and we're uh, having the first flight in late 2020. Um, but the goal this year uh, and early next year is to do a fully 3D printed upper stage test, uh, which is the smallest kind of section of the rocket that we can test um, an entirely 3D printed and fully integrated rocket on the ground. What are the costs of 3D printing rockets versus building rockets from scratch and then reusing them, like what Elon Musk is doing at SpaceX? Uh -huh, sure, so uh, the launch vehicle we're making is uh, $10 million per flight, um, and it's able to get much, much cheaper than that in the future because we're automating away a lot of the labor of building a rocket. Um, so really, if you look at like why rockets are expensive and why reusability makes sense, um, it's because the labor and all the time that goes into building a rocket in the first place uh, makes them really expensive. And so while other companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are focused on reusable rockets, um, we're focused on creating a way to make rockets much cheaper uh, through automation and um, 3D printing in the, in the beginning. Um, but then in the long run, those two can actually uh, merge together. So put that into context for me. You know, how much does a, a SpaceX flight cost per flight? Uh, sure. So SpaceX, I know, is a little north of $60 million uh, right now, but it's not exactly apples to apples. I mean, their rockets are almost 10 times bigger than the ones we're building. Uh, and so really, we're going after more of the uh, low Earth orbit constellation uh, uh, satellites, um, which are much smaller, but there's many more of them. So it's really kind of just a different market versus SpaceX. Um, but versus other small uh, launch companies um, that are also venture backed, uh, our payload is like six times bigger, um, but only costs twice as much. So it's, it's like three times cheaper per satellite um, than other small launchers. I know you have a contract with NASA. Talk to me about the regulation or oversight that's involved when it comes to a 3D printed rocket versus a more traditional or reused rocket. Uh, yeah, sure. So the regulation um, is mostly by the FAA. Uh, you just have to get a launch license and approval, um, of course, to launch a rocket to orbit. It's, it's a pretty big ordeal. Um, but that's a, that's a pretty defined process. I mean, whether it's a reusable rocket or um, a 3D printed rocket like what we're building, uh, that's really quite established. And um, right now we're just talking with every launch site in the United States. Um, and by the end of the year, planning on having one under contract with a permanent launch site for us. How can this technology be expanded beyond rockets? Uh, yeah, so of course, if you can 3D print and automate a rocket, uh, you can extend that to really uh, anything that flies um, in an aerospace products, especially. Uh, and so that's kind of how we think of it is a rocket. Um, you know, my background originally was at Blue Origin. Um, and then we have uh, my co-founder, which was from SpaceX. And a lot of our team come from leading private space companies. And so, you know, being able to go into this market uh, initially where there's a huge demand and not enough launches to space for satellites um, is the best first step. Uh, but then you can expand that to a whole range of other things in the future. So let's say a decade from now, how much of our aircraft is built with 3D printed parts? I mean, we know that 3D printed parts are already being used in jet planes as well. Um, but do you see a future where this is like a majority of, of, of our aircraft or where this is a, is a specific and niche sort of use case? Uh, sure. I mean, the way, the way we see it is, uh, I mean, I don't see a future 
uh, in 20 or 30 years where most of everything in aerospace isn't 3D printed. And the reason for that is because uh, with 3D printing, since you're building up from scratch, uh, it's actually faster uh, to 3D print things as lightweight as possible, just because you have to deposit less material. Um, and then that also makes them much cheaper. So you're actually incentivized to make things as lightweight uh, as possible with 3D printing. Um, and so really, if you want to look at like what is the, the way to make aerospace things and rockets as cheap as possible um, and as quickly as possible, like 3D printing actually aligns all of your economic and business incentives together uh, for the first time.